So, good morning. Uh, my name is Filipa. Um, so, this idea about the macrobiotic approach to the destiny came because I had, uh, I think it was uh, in 2011, I had this strange situation in my life where I was feeling like um, I didn't want to make any decisions. For instance, if uh, someone would ask me, what is your favorite color? Um, I was feeling that if I had answered that, I was constraining myself. So I was feeling that I had all the opportunities and all the chances and that uh, making a decision was like constraining me. So I was going to work uh, through all different ways every day and I was feeling really free, probably in at that moment. But then after two years, I got to the opposite situation and so it was like uh, as everything I was doing, I was going into the same situation. I could do lots of different things, but I ended up always in the same point. And so, a more uh, young, we could say, approach. And so, uh, because of that, uh, then I started thinking, so what led me into feeling those extreme situations? Um, and uh, why did they happen at that time? Uh, was there a meaning? Um, did I have a choice? Did things just happen? And so if there's a meaning, is there such a thing that we can say a destiny? Uh, are we already programmed? Uh, do we have instinct or knowledge? Or uh, where does one start and the other ends? and these kind of things. So, I hope you enjoy, it's just an approach. So destiny, it's uh, an event that will necessarily happen to a particular person or thing in the future, that's the dictionary definition. So how do we make our choices? So we will start uh, by there. How do we make actually our choices? So this is a brilliant uh, quote. Um, that says that uh, no knowns, we know what we know, right? We know things about macrobiotics. We know things that we do not know, even inside macrobiotics, but then we don't know what we don't know. So for instance, it, like 10 years ago, if someone would ask me what I would like to do, I would never say macrobiotics but because I didn't even heard about macrobiotics, so I couldn't choose on that. So what this means is that uh, maybe um, when we are deciding things in our lives we can only decide according to the things that we know and that uh, sometimes we already experienced. And there's also uh, another good example on this which is for instance um, when uh, someone asks us uh, a simple question like uh, for instance uh, our favorite country so we only think about uh, four or five countries, although we know many of them. So th this idea of uh, we only think about f five or six, so where in our brain does that information come from? It's from our rational brain? Why those and not others? Do you understand what I'm saying? So we are given five countries and then from those five, we decide or we feel we are deciding. So there's this kind of little conditioning. So, and, uh, and then we can also say that, uh, actually you said it before, the limits of my language are therefore the, language, the limits of my wor world. Because, for instance, if, when I'm asking a pers uh, something to a person, what, the way the person will um, respond will always be limited by the language. So imagine a person can, be, can see a, an amazing picture and uh, the person can try to describe that picture but I don't know if you ever felt that something, sometimes we don't have the, the words to describe what we are feeling. So that's also a limitation. <coughs> so when we talk we are already in a way <laughs> limitating because it's knowledge and well so, and so there's another, there are lots of studies and actually so this idea of destiny was um, 
already studied by lots of different cultures. The Greeks studied a lot. Uh, then uh, some uh, philosophers, for instance, Kant uh, talked about it. Nietzsche also mentioned the, the love of fate. He said we should love our destiny, our fate. And uh, nowadays there's even a discipline in science that studies uh, if we have or if we do not have free will. So it's the neuroscience of free will. And so that now we have lots of studies that say, of course there are just uh, studies and we can find other studies that say the opposite. So this is just an approach. But there are lots of studies that say that uh, when we think we are deciding, our mind already decided for us. You see? So when we and actually, uh, lots of these studies were made uh, measuring the brain activity. And so when we are aware that we were taking a decision, the decision was already taken because the activity started much before. So this is, if, if this is like this, so from where does that uh, kind of information or decisions come from? And so, there's another study, very interesting, which says that uh, we are not that different from animals. And so, in, um, when we are making decisions, small decisions or big decisions, the way that we decide is really, really very similar to how animals decide. And actually, it's uh, very related with um, our primitive development. So it's more in the in unconscious than in our conscious mind. And so they say that finding food, finding a mate, making friends and allies, uh, these kind of things we really uh, do like animals do. And so Bill, last uh, weekend, he was uh, giving this amazing example. He was saying like, uh, imagine if uh, he's a man, right? So he was saying that when a man enters a room and he sees like a beautiful woman, his body changes, right? And so is this his decision or is something else? So can we ask? And so if we are making these decisions and if it's not just a rational way, so where does it come from? So can we say it's our instinct? Because when animals decide, usually we say, oh, it's their instinct, right? But when people decide, we say, it's our knowledge. So what's the difference? Aren't we part of nature also? So maybe, and this is a quote from Oshawa, knowledge does not exist without instinct. And actually, uh, he also said that instinct comes before knowledge. And I think there's this idea of uh, the Orientals. So they, in the beginning they practiced, right? And then they took a meaning from that. But nowadays we think the opposite. We think, okay, I have this knowledge and then I will practice. See, it's the opposite. And uh, there's also this question, when we are doing this, what are we doing to our nature? Are we respecting our nature or not? Are we going with our nature or are we separating ourselves from her? And so we also said that words or speech develop in parallel with human knowledge and inversely with our consciousness. Because when we are having this kind of human knowledge, right, we are already conditioning Right? Because knowledge is all about concepts. And when we talk about concepts, they're just concepts. You understand? So when I say I love yellow, it's, it's just a concept. Okay. So, and these, with this, with the destiny approach, I talk with lots of friends. And most of them were like making these horrible faces like, what do you mean? I don't have free will. You, you cannot tell this to people. That's horrible. <laughs> so what are we here for? And, uh, so, and actually in the neuroscience, the discipline that studies this, they always talk about sense of agency, which is the same of sense of control. We feel that we need to have the control 
in our lives. So one question, you feel that animals need to feel the control of their lives or do you think this is just a, a, a human behavior, see? So, and with this kind of uh, sense of agency, we can ask ourselves, so when we, when we are uh, in love, right? And do we decide which people we are in love with or more than that so when we marry someone it is much easier to feel that that was destiny it was our fate right or if we have this amazing situation in our lives then we can assume okay this is our fate because in those huge big situations we are more aware i would say this is just a perspective and we are when we are more aware we let go knowledge and so in these big situations okay it was fate but in small situations we don't really like to feel that uh, it is not our decision but then so what are we can ask ourselves what are, what is the difference between a small decision and a big decision right so we can assume okay i didn't decide the people with whom i fell in love so that could be fate but uh, the things that I eat, no, that, that I decide, okay? But if we go a little bit uh, <laughs> more deeply into that, we can also try to feel that uh, many of our small decisions are based in stories that we might have heard like 10 years ago and we didn't remember anymore but they were there when we made a small decision today. And so I was talking with a good friend. This uh, situation that happened in her life, she was delivering her baby. She was having a baby at that moment. And uh, she's a macrobiotic, she's here. And uh, she had all prepared. She, um, she wanted a natural birth without no chemicals and, and none of those things. But then the doctor told her her son was uh, on the opposite. It didn't change. So she and the, the doctor told her, you need to decide now if you want to have uh, surgery or if you want your uh, children to born with the feet. And so she thought, oh God, in five minutes, I, and this is all against what I was expecting. And suddenly she remembered the story she heard when she was a small girl from her mother. And so the story was that her grandmother uh, had a, the similar issue. And so, but at that time they didn't make the surgery. And so they had to deliver the baby in her foot. And so what happened was that almost the two of them died. They didn't, luckily, but they almost died. And so these women, she remembered that at that moment, a story that didn't have any meaning, right? And she decided that she wanted the surgery. And after that, the doctor t told her, after the, the children born, the doctor told her, it was the best decision because the, um, how do you say? Born. Yes, born. it was uh, on the neck. And so if you, she would born like that, well, yes. So, is this knowledge, or is this instinct? So, I really, I, I'm, I love philosophies, <laughs> and I'm a romantic also. So, I really love to feel that uh, this was nature trying to send a message to this person because nature really wanted to this beautiful person to live, right? And this is instinct to me. So if this person would get to the concepts she had, maybe she had a different uh, response to that. But then we could ask, but were she, was she able to decide differently or not? Okay. So, and th I think this is a great uh, example of how small things that we do not give any value to then might be really an important thing in a different situation. So in uh, Germany they have that saying of the devil is in the d little details. And actually I found out with uh, these, uh, when I was searching, that in the beginning they were not saying the devil is in the details. They were saying God is in the details. This was changed. 
So it's a huge difference, isn't it? So just to end up with this part, so um, this is uh, also a, a guy that studied and then he said that freedom uh, of free will is an illusion. So because uh, he said that we need to ask ourselves if we are able to choose differently with the same, so imagine if we got one year back with the information that we had at that time, we wouldn't know anything about that was going to happen the next year. W were we able to decide differently at that time? Or w would we make the same decisions at the end? See? So, and he was also thinking, um, are, our, our, are our choices made intelligibly for us or not? And he also thought, are we really the orig originators of our choices or not? So, going back to the, what you bring, <laughs> why you came here, the oriental philosophy, macrobiotics. So, this probably doesn't mean many th anything to many of you, the Saikan, but if I talk about the trigrams, then probably everyone have heard about it. So, so what the trigram says is that we have the influence of heaven, that, what, that is what is above, the yin and yang. And so, for instance, we can say that uh, so when a children is born, we can go and meet her. And I remember, I think it was when, in one of your classes, you were saying, macrobiotic people are really strange. We go and see the kids, and instead of saying, oh, it's be beautiful, we say, oh, he has a young eyes, in mouth, and these kind of things. So this is the kind of influence that uh, nature, the heaven, has on us. And are we able to run away from that? to the color of our eyes or the shape, we, we are not. That is given to us by nature, right? And then in the middle, we have the way of the human and uh, Oshawa uh, named it uh, humanity. And um, in this area, we could assume that uh, we have uh, the, the influence that we receive from each other as a group. So for instance, if I was born, I born in a Catholic family, so the things that I received was really different from uh, a family that uh, had a different uh, religion or if they didn't have any religion at all. So, and uh, I could ask myself, were those uh, contributes that I received from my family, my parents, helped me or uh, lend me to decide in a specific way? at that moment or not? You see? You understand what I'm saying? Okay. And so, at the end we have the, the way of the earth, what is below. And so here we can say food, right? The food that nature gives us, does the food influence us or not? See? Actually, in the top I forgot to mention that, for instance, the, um, there are lots of studies that say that uh, when the moon changes, Right, that has influences on, uh, on us. So more crimes in the full moon and all those kinds of things. So, but in this uh, below, so I think food is really a good example. Also, for instance, uh, there are also some studies that says that if we're born in a landscape, we will think in a different way than if we're born in a place that is flat which is kind of uh, nice to think about it. So, and uh, this uh, approach, I also would like to say that in the middle, the Saikan, they were saying that um, for them it was really, really important the, for us to be kind with the other people because that's the influence that we receive from all other. So they, they were really into this be right and to be kind. If we have to influence other people, let be in a positive way. <laughs> yes. Okay, so and then here we could ask, so nature conditions, it's a conditioner, right? Whether we want it or not. So we, we don't decide when our poverty starts and I think we all agree that when we start poverty, this change a lot. So the same person 
yesterday was telling me, oh, my, my girl is in puberty and now I tell her lots of the same thing after and after and she doesn't remember. So our moods change. And also menstruation. So we do not know when our menstruation starts, right? In the beginning, in the first moment, right? So is this a human decision or it's nature's decision? So it, it is above us or it's just our body that decides, see? And actually even with pills we can think, okay, I may decide to take a pill to have the menstruation, but even though we are preconditioned because if we are macrobiotics we will say, no, 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 I don't want to have a pill, but if we are not, you see, the, our beliefs, the thing that we received is always uh, putting, putting us in a context. And so, and also, a con not a conditioner, but uh, something that happens that is beyond our control is also the falling in love, right? We don't really decide it. We, sometimes we think we decide that if we want to be with that person or not. But I, I think that even that, sometimes it re really runs out of our control. And this is the, this kind of examples that nature really has impact on us. And so, then going back to the animals, again, so animals have instincts and we have knowledge, right? I think we also have instincts. And so, for instance, we can, we can assume that, so if we were a tree, would you think that uh, we would decide when to flourish or when to have fruits? So the tree can think like this. If a tree would be a person, if a tree would feel like a person, probably the, th the tree would believe that it was her decision. But is it her decision or not? So what I'm trying to say is that, is it our decision when we have a baby, for instance? Or is nature acting through us? You see? Is this too, too metaphysic or not? <laughs> okay. So, and also bees and butterflies and salmons that go up to the river, it's their decision. So we could uh, imagine if, if they were thinking like this, probably they would uh, try to have a, give a meaning to everything they were doing. And they don't, uh, they don't need a meaning. And for many things that we do, we are always trying to find meanings, but maybe we don't need really a meaning. We just need to live according to nature and to uh, what our feeling says to us. And so, so animals, very instinct, people very knowledgeable. But actually there are lots of studies that show that humans, uh, animals also do lots of things that we could uh, name as knowledge. For instance, bees, they can make counts, they can sum, and they can sub subtract, and they are bees. Well, I, I was shocked, like, uh, but uh, no, they just go through their instinct. And the trees, also, there's also a great book uh, about the secret life of trees. And um, the, the guy says that uh, the trees, they have uh, the roots of the trees, they work more or less like a brain. So they are intelligent. And they actually cooperate with fungus and other trees. They are a community. And so it, this is all connected. This is, these are all quotes from Oshawa. So he was saying that uh, instinct or intuition substitutes the free will of the scientists. So that, that's this, the idea of uh, when we are too attached to knowledge, we lose our connect, uh, connection with nature we end up being away and far away from our instinct. Um, and he also said that the only instinct, intuition, only in instinct intuition is free because of this, because knowledge is concepts, right? If knowledge is concepts, concepts are restricting us. And so also, if you, if you think about, uh, well, when I'm making a decision, right? I'm preconditioned, as, as we saw before. I'm preconditioned to things I believe, to the things I experience it, through what I know, right? I will never decide on things I didn't know. So, but if I go with nature, so nature knows everything. So if I put my life into nature, into instinct, so nature will give me the information that I need 
to decide in that moment. And so he was always also saying that our center, which thinks, remember, understands and rules, is the infinite itself and nothing else. So it's our center, see, it's our nature. So also in the philosophy, so have, have anyone heard about the Stoics? So, yes. yes. Yeah. I really like the Stoics because they were very optimistic and actually many people say they were the fathers, the, the parents of uh, this new kind of thinking of uh, instead of trying to change the world, change yourself, this new approach, the Stoics were talking about it far long ago. So this is a um, Greek school but it was so popular that uh, the Romans loved it and so they took it also to them and so many well-known Romans were using this approach and we can understand why because uh, so they, these, the Stoics they were saying that um, we have a destiny right and uh, our, our only free will is whether we accept it or not so this is strong, <laughs> most people don't like this, right? But if we think about it, so this is, might be very liberating because uh, it's what they're actually saying is that accept the moment you are living. So obviously we, it's good to try to change things if we think they are wrong, right? But uh, we first need to accept things and then go with the flow. So. And this, I think this is very common nowadays. If you really want to escape the things that harass you, what you need is not to be a different place, what you need is not to be in a different place, but to be a different person. So, so these people were talking this much before. And so, and then they, they, they gave lots of uh, suggestions. So if we have a destiny, uh, how, how to comply with it? right how to be happy and this this was a very um, this came uh, become too very popular because they were living difficult times so if a person was doing something that uh, and it was punished they were sent to the lions so they were really in stress we say we are in stress but probably they were also in stress and so this was a very good uh, approach for people to become more relaxed and to live with life. And then they were, uh, they were saying that men should understand nature and integrate within it. And so it, this was their approach to be positive, accept what we are living and be in nature. Because they were saying that there were no differences between goddess, nature and the universe. And they were always saying, we are nature, we are inside of nature. And so we, we just need to go and flow with nature. And so, what are the implications of believing in a destiny, right? So, what's, what are the implications? Because everything that we believe have implications in our life, right? So, I chose four. There are many more, I guess, then you can give some more. So I think we become more, we receive more natural freedom and less human conditioning. And this might seem a little bit strange, right? But so we have this saying in economics, uh, I don't know if you heard about it, about the cost of opportunity. So what the cost of opportunity says is that when we make a decision, which decision, or whatever, we are already uh, conditioning ourselves. So what they say is that when we decided to come here, the time that we are losing here, we won't get the time to do anything else. That's not possible. So, and th that is the cost of the opportunity. So when I decide to do something, I will lose the opportunity to do a different thing. So, but what happens here? What happens here is that when we feel that uh, we decide and we like the experience, so I, came, I decided to come, I'm really liking, I don't feel myself conditioned, right? I only feel conditioned when I decide or, uh, or a situation decides for me and, and I have to be in a place and I don't really like to be in that place. 
that's when I feel myself conditioned. So what we could say about conditioning is it's just a state of mind, right? It's just a state of mind. If we accept where we are, what we are feeling, so it's much more liberating. And then again, if uh, we are deciding, I think we are much less artistic or um, creative than nature. Nature is much more creative than us. So, and probably that's why many artists, when they are painting or writing, they say, it was not me, it was something else. And they were free, feeling really liberating. They were feeling that they were much more. They were a part of something, not just them, right? And so is this uh, more natural freedom and, uh, freedom and less human conditioning? And so the second one is more connection instead of less commitment, right? Because, um, well, when we are um, living and accepting things, right, we are not creating barriers. We, and we, when we are not creating barriers, we can see better what's happening around us. And uh, we, we stop uh, judging, right? When we accept, we stop judging. And so we, it's easier for us to connect to, with ourselves and actually with the things that uh, are beyond us, okay? And so, oh, also, well, another uh, thing that always usually came up in this destiny approach was that people were saying, okay, if I believe in destiny, so I'll just lay on the sofa. I won't do anything, I'll wait for the destiny to solve for itself, right? But we are forgetting that uh, we received the, inf the influence of nature from heaven, from earth, from all around here. So, and is that influence that brings us to be ourselves, to bring to our, uh, what we have to do in life, to our, uh, our connection, to our, um, how would I say? <laughs> purpose exactly right so it's never to be laid in the sofa probably people that lay all day in the sofa they don't really believe in destiny they don't believe in anything they probably don't care with anything right so it's not uh, the thing that we are just laid in the sofa it's the opposite it's to accept that we receive that influence and go with it so more connection so also the third thing it's more e ecocentric and less and uh, environmental. So this is more the approach of the we instead of me, right? If we feel we are in nature, so it's much more about uh, what is uh, I, me in a group instead of me having my personal development in, independently of uh, people that surrounds us and the effect that it has on other people. What we were talking about yesterday, like uh, when we make a decision on the food we eat, it has influence in other countries, other people, like everything is connected. And so when we believe in this uh, destiny approach and in nature, in ourselves, I think it's more like uh, this connection with everything. And uh, also we become more, in, we can become more environmental with this, right? Because uh, when we are connecting with all the rest, when we are assuming that nature is our destiny and destiny is our nature, then we see ourselves also as nature and not just me. So, and finally, more acceptance and simplicity and less judgment and criticism. Because many times when we want to be in a place and we are in another place, we become critics. And sometimes we become critics of ourselves, and some other times, many times, we become critical of other people. I don't want to be here, and I'm here, but it's that person's fault, not mine, right? So when we are accepting what we are living, it's, it's much, much different. So it's a, an approach, and it's much more simple, because we don't need to find that uh, meaning. Why am I here? Why, why have I, do, I need to do this, right? It's just 
go with the flow, go with the nature. And so past and future, they, they stop uh, worrying us, right? If we believe in destiny, so future is not a concern. We will live in the moment and we can relax much more, right? And so how to connect with our destiny? So, food. So, if our destiny is nature, food is where we have all been talking about food, 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 and we, we know the influence that food has on us. So, if we want to connect with nature, and if destiny is nature, well, we need to connect with food, right? And actually, I heard some stories from some people here that they were saying when they go to the wild, they really have like mystic experiences. So it's much more unusual to have a mystic or natural, ex to me they are natural experience, we probably should have much more of that, but I don't hear people in the city saying, oh, I crossed that corner and I have that amazing, <laughs> incredible experience of my ancestors, I don't have that, but when we go to nature, suddenly we start feeling and thinking and because we are connected, right? We are the instrument. And so also meditation, because uh, meditation brings, takes us away to the knowledge, what we think we think about things, and brings us to the body. And the body, what is the body? The body is the, the instrument that nature gives us. And so I really liked your meditation yesterday. I even wrote some things, because you were, so it was like, close our minds, so take away our thoughts, right? It started like that. Go to the body, to the instrument that nature gives us, and then send love to everybody. So which is, what is that? It is to connect with everything. So stop this, come here, and then expand. That was really a nice uh, exercise for me to connect to nature, to our destiny, to our philosophy of life. And so, writing in a descriptive way, disconstructing our feelings. So Seneca was saying that he loved to write because he, he said that he, I knew myself when I write and uh, I create my ethics when I write. So when he had these kind of uh, different experiences, he would go, he would sit and he would write to, to try to disconstruct it. See, so I don't know how many people here like to write. I like to write and actually it's a really good uh, thing to let go of the head and put it in a paper and... Dancing, singing, painting, so all the things that uh, Han was talking, really liked. This, if we, we, if we cannot go to nature, we can bring nature to us also, right? Having lots of plants in the house delegating decisions and maybe the divination because so see if we are restricted when we make decisions so sometimes it's good to ask someone else to decide for us to like those uh, vegetable baskets i like to receive them at home because i never know what i will get otherwise when i go and shop i end up most of the times buying the things that I like the most, see? And if I have to put something new, is because my macrobiotic mind is saying, oh, you should put something new, it's a one thing. But then when I ask for the basket of vegetables, lots of different things, and I, I think, how will I do this? Those were decisions, those fruits and vegetables were things that I wasn't going to... And finally, practicing kindness and generosity, because if we are all one, the things that we send, it will affect us, everyone, right? And uh, I think destiny in nature is, is all about that, is that this kind of big connection. And I will end with a a quote from Oshawa again. <laughs> and so he said that here is the narrow door. It is quite small and narrow and unpretentious, like those twin words, yin and yang. 
But once you have passed beyond this small door, you are in infinite freedom, eternal happiness and absolute justice. And so this, this is just my reading, but uh, what I feel is saying is that when we go over the yin and yang, when we go over the try to understand and to, to create knowledge and to then we find the infinite and that's it. <laughs>